Vertical development is all about elevating our ability to make meaning of our world in more cognitively and emotionally sophisticated ways. The ideas and the concepts surrounding vertical development come from the field of developmental psychology. In the field of developmental psychology, there's been some researchers that have focused on adult development as opposed to what's typically focused on, which is child development. And what these adult development researchers have wondered is one, can adults develop? And then two, do they develop? And what this research has found is that yes, adults can develop, but that most adults don't develop. And in part of this research, they've identified that there's three primary different vertical development levels. I call them mind 1.0, mind 2.0, and mind 3.0 because they're representative of different internal operating systems. That literally, people who operate at these different levels, they are wired to operate differently. And what we found is that, yes, adults can develop, but most do not. You see almost two thirds of all adults stay in mind level 1.0 throughout their adult lives. But we see others that progress. So we can change the wiring, wiring of our internal operating system. It's just that most people don't. So in this video, I wanna focus on mind 1.0. I wanna help you better understand what mind 1.0 is, what one's internal operating system looks like and how they manifest themselves in the world. So mind 1.0 is what I call self-preservation mode. When we're here, we have three primary needs that we are, our internal operating system is wired to fulfill. These needs are to be safe, to be comfortable, and to feel like we belong. And when we have these needs, we also carry around fears. The fears are essentially the opposite of these needs. We fear being exposed, we fear being uncomfortable, and we fear not fitting in. Now there's some hallmarks to Mind 1.0 people in terms of how they manifest themselves into the world. Mind 1.0 people really like to join and identify with tribes that will help them fulfill their needs and quell their fears. So they oftentimes will join social groups. This includes family. This could be work groups, social groups, religious groups, political groups, whatever they might be. They join those groups in hopes that they will be safe, comfortable, and feel like they belong. In fact, as part of this, they are willing to give up their power in and independence in exchange for their safety, comfort, and belonging. Right? My 1.0 people really don't like to be leaders. They don't want to step up and have that type of a responsibility. In fact, they say, I'll give you my power and independence to their group's leaders, and you just tell me what to do, and I will gladly do it, provided you keep me safe, comfortable, and feeling like I belong. And so what this means is that my 1.0 people often come across as dependent thinkers. They generally don't like to think for themselves, develop their own opinions, and they're quick to go with the ideas and mantras associated with the groups that they are a part of. Whenever I think about Mind 1.0 individuals, I think about this image of a huddle of emperor penguins in Antarctica. When somebody's in Mind 1.0, their focus is really at being in the center of the huddle because this is where they're going to feel the safest, the most comfortable, and the most like they belong, right? If they're on the outside, they're exposed to predators. It's uncomfortable because it's colder there, and they feel like they're being ostracized. So Mind 1.0 people are oftentimes jostling for position to get to the center of the huddle. So that's Mind 1.0, and whether or not we have developed beyond Mind 1.0 ourselves, we've all been here. This is something that we should all be able to relate to and understand. 